You know, I would be lying if I said I don't want to gloat, but I fucking told you so. How many years now have I been saying that if this cucked, dickless gaming industry keeps bending over for censorship when it comes to the anti-sexualization censors, that our old enemies, the anti-violence censors, are gonna smell weakness and come back in force. Because you fuckers need to understand, they never left. They never went away. Everyone celebrated when Jack Thompson was disbarred and, oh, he, he was the last boss. Now that Jack Thompson is gone, gaming is gonna be this free market utopia. Wrong. The censors never left. All they did was change their tactics a bit. So instead of trying to attack us from the outside, they moved inside. Now the censors are running the companies. And the, as we've seen since Gamergate with Anita Sarkeesian, they could not bend over for Sarkeesian and let her fuck them up the ass fast enough. Everything she said, whatever you say, mistress, we're going to ban that right away, ma'am. The in This industry is... It's, it's fucked. And why is it in this state? Well, it's what I uh, mentioned in a previous video, actually. When the game industry started out, it was hobbyists doing it for the love of the art form. It was by gamers for gamers. And this passion is what caused the industry to grow. But now that the industry is grown and bloated... These passionate people are driven out and being replaced by career managers. Bobby Kotick of Activision, I think he's worth like $7 billion. With a B. Billion. Do you think he's ever played a video game in his life? No, he's not a gamer. He's a professional money man, a manager. And these professional money men and managers that are in charge of the industry right now could not care less about gaming as a hobby, as an art form. All it is to them is a paycheck. So if they honestly believe they could get a bigger paycheck by bending over for the censors, they will gladly pull their pants down and say, oh, you don't even need to use lube or a condom. Just do it raw as long as you give me an extra four bucks. I'll do anything for them shekels. So now we're in an industry where all of the old guard is gone, or the vast majority of them. There's still a few small holdouts in AAA, but not very many. Like, for example, the last few at Blizzard just left. And they've all been replaced by managers, money men, investors, shareholders. They're the ones calling the shots. So when, uh, when we were first fighting against the censors, the industry was comprised of actual gamers. And we fought back. You remember those days? The industry, the fans... Even the game's journalists, we all hand-in-hand hand fought back against the censors and won. So the censors just decided to go to work for the industry and corrupt it from the inside because these uh, money men career managers are a whole lot easier to lie to than someone who actually cares about the art form and the hobby. So now, during the whole Gamergate era, when we blatantly saw these big companies bending over and ha just censoring everything to appease the NPCs, and going into 2016, Sony moved the PlayStation headquarters to California from Tokyo, and it's been all downhill ever since. They've just been bending over for all the censors. Anything, at least... They've only been censoring Japanese games. They're kind of a special case. They're extremely xenophobic because Western games can get away with everything they censor in Japanese games. So it's, I mean, if they want to hasten their downfall, it's fine with me. And any company that continues to hold hands with Sony after all this, they deserve to go down with them. No sympathy for these fuckers. But yeah, so the point is, the this industry that once had some balls voluntarily chopped off its own balls and handed them to the likes of Sarkeesian on a silver platter and 
even back then, I was fucking warning. If this industry keeps bending over for this new wave of censors, our old enemies, the anti-violence censors, are just going to come back because they're going to smell the weakness. They're going to smell the blood. They're going to look down at where the game industry's balls used to be and see a mangina. And they're going to realize, now's the time for us to come back. And we're seeing this right now. We just went into it. We got politicians calling to censor and regulate violent games now. And I'm, uh, I don't care. I don't care anymore. Like I've said before, the stuff I really cared about, you guys let it get censored. You let it get taken away. I've almost 100% left what could be called the game industry now. All my gaming spending is outside of the industry. I could not care less what happens to this cucked, dickless fucking industry anymore. I want it to crash and burn faster so actual gamers with a passion for gaming can take over again. That's the only thing that's going to save the industry at this point, is a, a, a complete collapse and rebuild in the vein of what we had in the 80s. That's what it's going to take. But yeah, I warned this shit was going to happen, and now it's fucking happening. Now the anti-violence censors are back because they realize the people in charge of the industry aren't the people with, the, with balls who were in charge the last time around. This new wave of managers and CEOs and owners will gladly bend over for anything if they think it'll make them money. Now, uh, a few of them might fight back when it actually does look like a threat to their wallet. Like, for example, there was a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of saber rattling when it comes to banning loot boxes. But then EA and Activision and them, they just uh, tugged the leashes of their pet politicians like, Hey! You're getting out of line there, Fido. You better remember who owns you, bitch. So, and then the politicians just got in line and said, Yes, yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Um, Yeah, so loot boxes aren't gambling since you don't gain any money out of it. Uh, 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 is, it was that good, Master EA? They might do the same when it comes to violence in gaming. But uh, given all the push from everywhere else, there's a much bigger push still to ban violence in games than there is loot boxes. So I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, ev if even EA and Activision, uh, they already bent over for China. We've seen this in fucking China. China says, oh, all, all blood and death is now banned in games. Developers were like, yes, sir, and removed it all to keep their games in China. They're going to do the same shit in the US and the EU if it came down to it. They will gladly compromise on fucking everything as long as they can keep making their billions. So I, I don't care what happens to this industry. I want this industry to crash and burn and become a niche among actual gamers again. That's the best possible outcome as far as I'm concerned. And the more of these big AAA developers and publishers want to kill themselves, the better off it's going to be for people like me who want to break in on the indie scene. The less competition I have, the better. In fact, if I can use the flaming corpse of AAA to further advertise my own stuff, oh, dude, you bet your fucking ass I'm going to do that. Another tangent here. This just proves, like I've been saying for years, we have no allies in this fight against the censors. Both the left and the right are censorious busybodies. And all these years, when I keep saying how, you know, I will keep warning against right-wing censorship, there's always right-wing cucks coming out of the woodwork saying stupid fucking shit like they oh even back in the 90s it was all it was all the democrats it was all the democrats like yeah i mean uh, the right wingers were always pro freedom as we're seeing right now clearly all these right wingers pushing to censor video games right yeah where are you now you fucking cucks where are you now What's your excuse now that even the president and multiple other lower-ranking politicians in the Republican Party are coming out pushing to censor violent video games? What's your excuse?
What do you have to say? Oh, I know. Never mind. Don't even, don't even say it. I know what you're going to say. Ah, well, they're just rhinos. They're not real Republicans. Well, when these rhinos make up 100% of the elected politicians, I really don't give a fuck what you consider a real Republican. You can take it and shove it up your ass. Yeah, no, neither side, left nor the right, can be trusted when it comes to censorship. Which is precisely the reason why I say we just stop talking to them. Stop trying to reason with people who don't have functioning brains. They'll ne- you're never going to convince them. They operate 100% on emotion. They're not capable of thinking. So just we need to accept the fact that whether the people in charge are on the left or the right, they're always going to try to censor us. So what do we do? Do we give up the fight? No. This is why I keep advocating for the creation and maintenance of technology that makes any, any censorship or regulation impossible. Let the government say and do whatever the fuck they want. It'll be just like prohibition. Government says no more drinking alcohol. The people of the U.S. say, (laughs) yeah, keep telling yourself that. That's what we need. Remember what the invention of the internet did. Remember how it absolutely crushed the government's ability to to basically be a moral busybody? Look at how much the porn industry has boomed now that the government can't censor it as easily anymore. We need another boom like that. We need the creation of technology that makes it impossible to censor or regulate or to track anyone down anonymously. Yeah, I know what everyone's saying, too. It's like, oh, but my child porn, my terrorism. Oh, you mean the same shit that's been used as an excuse to get us where we are now? I remember when the internet first started up. I remember those days. Pepperidge Farm remembers. And back in those days, I was, uh, we, we were told constantly, like, oh, well, uh, you know, you can have your Wild West free speech you know, internet but we know we're going to need to do something about this terrorist content and child porn and all that. We were like, okay, fine. You can remove the kitty porn and the terrorist content, but leave everything else alone. Look where that got us. Clearly, nobody can be trusted with censorship powers. If we want to avoid a, uh, a totalitarian dystopia, I-, I mean, an internet where child porn and terrorist content is allowed to exist is actually seeming like the lesser of two evils at this point that's how bad these fuckers have fucked up and if anyone tries to blame us for it all we got to say is we tried to do it your way for decades we gave you permission to censor and regulate and get rid of that stuff You are the fuckers who reached too far too many times and fucked it up. If you would just stay within your fucking bounds, if you would quit trying to censor everything, we wouldn't be in this position right now. It's your fucking fault we have to resort to this, not ours. So yeah, just remember this shit. And every time you see someone pushing something like, uh, like the Tor browser... Completely decentralized, anonymous, with the Onion websites that make it almost impossible to uh, trace and, and to shut down. That's what we need to ma- to spread around the entire internet. Make it completely impossible to censor or regulate in any way. Then l- we can let the governments impotently rage all they fucking want. But they're not going to be able to do anything. That is my ultimate end goal, is defang these fucking totalitarians. Yeah, let, let them pass whatever laws they want to make themselves feel better. As long as they're going to be unenforceable, I couldn't care less.